Well, hi everybody, this is Michael Butterman with the Boulder Philharmonic Orchestra inviting you to make your mark on our season opening concert. Let me explain. First of all, we're opening our season a little bit earlier than usual this year, the weekend following Labor Day, and we are welcoming the sensational young violin prodigy Amrin Almeida to play with us the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Uh, we're also offering the uh, Symphony Number no. 5, the Reformation Symphony, as it's called, by Felix Mendelssohn, and then something of a rarity, the um, uh, well, work by the Renaissance composer John Dowland called Lacrime Antique for a string orchestra. And even though I think this program works beautifully, as conceived there, uh, it has occurred to us over the summer that you know, there could be a little bit more to it. We have room probably to add a little bit extra, maybe an opening work that somehow connects to the rest of the program in one way or another. And we thought, why not give you the chance to let us know what you think would work best. So I have three suggestions for you. And uh, we have links uh, to orchestral recordings. I'm also gonna play a little snippet on the piano of these uh, different pieces so you can get a sense of what they are. Uh, and then let us know what you think and we'll, uh, we'll go with that. You will have the final say in what we end up presenting as our opening work on the concert coming up in early September. Here's one possibility. Since we are closing the concert with the Symphony No. 5 by Mendelssohn, we could open the program with a, a short concert opener by Mendelssohn. And the piece that comes to mind, I think most obviously, is his Overture to A Midsummer Night's Dream, a piece that he wrote when he was 17 years old, probably the greatest work by a teenage composer in history. I think I feel fairly confident in, in, in saying this. Uh, it's a piece that you probably uh, know well, at least parts of, and you can listen to the orchestral version, but just to give you a little taste, it opens with these uh, very expectant woodwind chords, so tricky to play exactly together and in tune. It sounds like this. some really quick stuff in the strings. He was so fond of writing this kind of uh, fairy-like or elfin-like um, uh, passages for strings and woodwinds for that matter, and there's plenty of it in, in, uh, in this piece for sure. A little bit later on, there's a, also an E major, a more sort of triumphant theme that we hear. And so on. And then later on still, we have this kind of a drone. And this idea here is the braying of a donkey. Um, as you know, in the, uh, in the play by Shakespeare, uh, Nick Bottom is uh, tur turned into a donkey from time to time for various reasons, uh, and that's uh, Mendelssohn evoking that particular um, happening in the play. So, full of all kinds of uh, interesting uh, tone painting, uh, a really wonderful piece that lasts about eight or nine minutes, so that's option number one. So another approach would be this, since we're going to be playing the Tchaikovsky uh, Violin Concerto just before intermission, we could open with another work by Tchaikovsky, uh, and there are plenty of good choices, of course. I'm going to suggest we consider the Polonaise and Waltz from uh, his opera Eugene Onegin. Now, even though this is music from an opera, it's dance music. And uh, of course, Tchaikovsky is one of the great ballet composers of all time. You can hear his signature affinity for dance writing coming through. Here's a little bit of the, uh, the waltz portion of the Polonaise and Waltz. <laughs> So that's a good option. That's option number two. So the third option we can consider uh, is one that connects to a thematic thread that might not immediately be obvious, but that is the, uh, the Renaissance connection that two of the three works on the program uh, share. Uh, 
I mentioned the work by John Dowland, who was a Renaissance composer. But the Reformation Symphony of Mendelssohn uh, celebrates the 300th anniversary of the Augsburg Confession, which was one of the major events of the Protestant Reformation, which of course is one of the most important historical happenings within uh, the Renaissance time period. Mendelssohn makes use of a uh, chorale tune written by Martin Luther, which of course was composed originally during the Renaissance. Uh, so it occurred to me that we could play the Fantasia on a theme by Thomas Tallis, uh, composed by Rafe von Williams in the early 20th century. Uh, this one also makes use of music written during the Renaissance, and uh, a, a British composer is, is the source material in this case, just as John Dowland was a Renaissance British uh, composer. So uh, this piece was written for a string orchestra, but in sort of three different phases, you might say. There's a larger string orchestra, there's a sort of smaller orchestra that is uh, placed usually at a distance. Um, this was originally written to be played in a cathedral, so the idea of playing with the, the space around uh, the uh, performance makes uh, a lot of sense. And then there's, uh, on top of all that, there is a solo quartet, so really three different layers of sound. And, and he creates a uh, just a sublime uh, atmosphere throughout all of this, uh, evoking, well, the Renaissance, and he quotes a, um, a setting of Psalm number two, uh, which we sometimes think of as why do the nations so furiously rage together, um, but uh, it was called Why Fumeth in Fight uh, by Thomas Tallis, which sounds like this. This is the original version anyway. So, von Williams takes that kind of uh, simple setting of uh, this psalm and layers it in just myriad ways that make it a uh, really, really deeply affecting piece. Atmospheric, it's one of the, I think, most popular works uh, in the UK, for sure, of, of any classical uh, composer. And uh, it would work very nicely uh, on this program as it connects to the, the Renaissance theme, as I mentioned. So I think you have three good options, all of them quite different, all of them offering a slightly different um, kind of addition to the program. Up to you. Let us know what you'd like us to play, and we'll play it for you in early September.